Look at that. Look at how crazy that is. That is really cool. We can see the air currents. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today we're going to be taking a look at something called Schlieren photography. And Schlieren photography is very cool because it's a way of looking at fluids of different densities as they move around. Today we're going to be more specifically looking at air. So imagine I have this lighter and I light it. We have lots of different air currents happening here. We have the butane feeding the flame, the air also feeding the flame, and the air coming off the top that's been heated by the flame. And all these air currents are moving, but we can only see the flame with our physical eyes. So imagine if we could see all those air currents. It would be really cool. And so that's what we're gonna be doing here. And hopefully you might have the materials around your house to uh, build this project as well. So I will be using this reflector telescope that I have. I got it at a thrift store for about $15, as well as an LED, a razor blade, and a couple other things. So let's get started. So this is a basic Schlieren photography setup. Here we have the point light source, and this is a very special light source because it's pretty bright, and it also has a very small hole that lets the light out. The light's then gonna come out, be reflected by the parabolic mirror from the telescope, and because it's a parabolic mirror, it's going to be reflected to a focal point before it hits the camera. Now at the focal point, the light is going to be the same size that it was at the light source. And an important aspect of the Schlieren light setup is that we're going to have a razor blade at this focal point. So what's gonna happen is when there's air that flows in front of the mirror of a different density, that's going to change the refractive index of the air, which means that the light is going to be bent ever so slightly in a different direction. Now, if the light that was going from here was originally going and it hit the razor blade, that air might be changed ever so slightly to pass over the razor blade and into the camera sensor, creating a more bright spot on the camera. Whereas if that light was originally hitting the camera sensor and got refracted to hit the razor blade instead, it would be a slightly darker spot on the camera, which in the end equates to a picture on the camera of the different air densities that are in front of the mirror. Now the first step is to remove the parabolic mirror in the back of your telescope. Now the mirror in my telescope was only held on by three screws, so it made it pretty easy to remove. And the nice thing about this is that after I'm done with this experiment, I can put this mirror right back in the telescope and it'll work as normal. Now the second component I'm going to use to make this Schlieren light setup is the razor blade. Now we want this razor blade to be pretty adjustable so we can move it around and get it fine-tuned. Now there's a lot more precise ways I could do this, but I had this broken lamp and so I just mounted this lamp to this wooden tray by tying its cord around and I used aluminum duct tape to mount the razor blade to the broken lamp. Now the next step is to make a point light source and this is arguably the hardest step of this process. So currently this LED is not going to work because it has about five millimeters of plastic above the diode which actually generates the light. Which means that if we tried to somehow encapsulate this in reflective material and then poke a small hole in the front We'd only get a little bit of that light out because it's been diffused. So we need to file away this plastic until we're right about at the diode. So we can start doing that by cutting off a little bit of the LED and then sanding it down until we get to the diode. Well, there it is. I've sanded down this LED pretty well. You can see on the top there is little diode. Now we're going to need to cover this with some aluminum duct tape and poke a small hole right above the hole where the diode is. So that way we get that very small point light source. I'm just gonna poke the hole in this tin foil tape with a resistor. Well, it seems like I've accidentally grabbed a red LED for this one, but that should still work. You can see I can get the most amount of light when the foil is right here. So now that I have this red one working, um, red isn't that bright, 
And it's a lot easier to start off with a white LED, so I'm going to go ahead and make another one and attach it to this base that I made out of a coat hanger. As you can see, I just soldered it to the coat hanger and I soldered one of the leads to the light. So here we have it. It's pretty simple and I can fine tune this just by bending the lead that it's attached to. There we go. That point light source looks good to me. Let's set up the optics. Over there, I have the mirror, and I'm just kind of putting it on the iPad box right now because the screws fit over it. Then over here, I have my uh, light with a razor blade on it, and then my point light source pointing towards this. Now here's where things get a little bit more tricky. It's a lot easier to do this when it's darker. So I'll turn off my lights, and I'll adjust this so I get that focal point right on the razor blade. The first time I did this, it took me like uh, maybe 10 minutes to get it all aligned perfectly, but now I can do it a little bit faster. So I'll get it aligned and show you what it looks like. All right, I got it to work. I know it's a little bit dark in here, but you can see that on this camera, we have the mirror and the mirror looks illuminated while everything else is dark. When I move this razor blade down just a little bit, you can see that really small focal point of light being reflected back. It's really important to tune this razor blade just perfectly like that. This is lighting the candle. And then you can see what happens as I blow on a little bit. And then I extinguish the candle. This whole thing just looks really cool. So here you see when my soldering iron is on the other side of the room. Now if I blow from here, check this out. About five, well maybe about one second later, it actually distorts the smoke coming off the soldering iron. That is literally the heat rising off the soldering iron. So right now, you can see there's actually some air blowing by the mirror because the window's open and the cool air from outside is coming in. But if I hold this piece of ice over the mirror, you can see the less dense air as it falls down. So what you'll notice that I'm doing here is I'm moving the razor blade on the lamp and you can see how the contrast of the image actually changes, which is pretty interesting. Alright, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed making this video. I had a lot of fun being able to visualize the air currents for Sri Lankan photography. So I know I haven't been able to publish many videos lately and that's because I've been very busy with my schoolwork at MIT. So I'm currently doing MIT all remote on the computer and taking my classes from home, from my Tenor Tech area over here. But there will be some pretty cool videos coming out in the future. I'm working on building a vacuum tube theremin. So I'm not sure where I'm gonna finish that project, but it'll be a really cool video. So until next time, have a great day.